Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at approaches to All of Me. All of Me is a jazz standard written in 1931 and it was recorded by Django Reinhardt during the war in 1940 and it's become a very popular tune among gypsy jazz players. It's got an interesting and useful chord sequence. Um, for two bars you have one chord and then another two bars with another chord and if it's played at a steady tempo then that gives you plenty of time to think. Um, and uh, so you're not constantly changing chord but this is also a tune where the chords change a lot from one to the next so the usual bluffing approach that I try and teach of playing a single scale all the way through <laughs> definitely does not work on this one so first of all I'm going to give you just the melody and not talk very much about that and then we're going to look at different approaches to improvising over this chord sequence the melody is all uh, crotchets or quarter notes all longer notes than that and so uh, it's very easy to read and easy to play the melody. Uh, so I'm just going to play it exactly as it's written. So because there are no eighth notes in that, it doesn't really have any swing as in the melody itself. So you actually have to do quite a lot to dress that up. But if it's the first time you played it, then I would spend a bit of time learning the melody just like that, so that you then have that as a skeleton to hang things on. Uh, I'll just do it once more, playing with the melody but around the melody, and then we'll move on to the improvisation. So that's what you should be aiming at, something which is much more relaxed and much more personal and something that will change slightly every time you play it and that's before you even get to the solo. Um, incidentally I did a video recently about accompaniment uh, where you do uh, with two note chord where you do the job of the guitarist and that was using all of me. So if you are learning this uh, song, this tune to play it, then I would check that video out as well. So, uh, coming to the chords, um, the approach I often take, um, the, the lazy approach to improvisation is, if possible, then you find the one scale, often the pentatonic scale, which will go almost through all of the chords. And you will very quickly come to grief if you try and do that here because it goes from straight from C major to e, e7 which has a lot of notes that are not 
in the um, key of C major. So you can't use the, that, that approach, you have to do this chord by chord and that's the approach that we're going to take. Um, incidentally there is a backing track which you can use with this video and normally I say you can request the PDF in this particular case uh, because of this particular lesson I'm gonna if you want you can also have the backing track so do email me if you're interested in that um, so it means that you can practice the different ideas I'm going to demonstrate so the first thing is to try playing the scale of each chord as we go through um, now you've got to think about whether this is a major 7 chord or a 7 chord or a minor 7 chord so if you're doing a C major 7 <laughs> Then the seventh note is going to be uh, just below the root, like that. If it's a, a seventh chord, then that seventh is flattened. So a C7 will be like that. So the next chord is E7. And notice we've got this, the flat seven because it's a seven chord. And then same with the A. And then the minor scale. Because it's a minor 7, the 7th is flattened as well. Uh, and so we go through. So I'm going to play uh, the first few bars. Um, in fact, I might do the whole lot. And then you can use the backing track to practice without looking, uh, only looking at the chords. And uh, try and um, see if you can play those scales. Obviously that's not going to make a solo, but it is going to give you a feeling for what the notes are that are available that you can be drawing on. You can do exactly the same thing, not with the major scale, but with the arpeggio. So, um, C major, so C major 7 rather, is going to have that B natural, E7, And so on. So you can work that out for yourself. Uh, probably best if you don't write it out for yourself, but just try and do it by ear. If you need to do it slower, then then do it as slow as you like. And you don't necessarily need the backing uh, when you're practicing it, although you will want to check with that. So uh, practice the major scales and the uh, arpeggios all the way through the sequence. There's a danger if you practice this too much that you'll find yourself always playing upward scales always starting on the root and not having any swing or syncopation. So I'm going to give you an example of a solo which is using the scales and the arpeggios chord by chord but is trying to go both up and down and is mixing note lengths um, and isn't always starting on the root.
just an example of a pretty uninspired solo, uh, but it does in introduce these different ideas of up and down, of syncopation and swinging, and not over starting on the tonic. Now let's do the same thing with pentatonic scales and with blues scales. So the uh, starting with the pentatonic at C major. <laughs> Well, that sounds like uh, E major pentatonic, A major, and then a D minor, and so on. And if you're not sure what a pentatonic scale is, then I do have a video explaining this. Uh, in fact, two videos one um, introducing the concept in general and the second one on improvisation using pentatonic scales. So you might want to go through this nice and slowly because there's quite a lot of thinking to do to get that right. And then uh, we have the same thing with the major blue scale. So that's the pentatonic scale plus a flattened third. So for a C, that's the C major blue scale. For E, for A, for a minor blue scale, which you need for the D minor, then it's this. So that's um, root, flat and third, fourth, flat and fifth, fifth, seventh, eighth. Um, and I've got, and also, you know, I've got a video about everything. <laughs> There's one about, um, several about minor blue scales as well. So check those out. And then see if you can go all the way through the sequence going uh, up and maybe down the blue scales and the pentatonic scales. I'll just go once through and I'll do some of that. Start with the pentatonic. <laughs> Now it's, it's very good as an exercise to do just pentatonic scales or just blues scales or just major scales and so on. But when it comes to actually soloing, you need to have done that enough times that you can bring those ideas in almost without thinking about them. And that is not the work of weeks or months, and that's the work of years. But having that as a goal and knowing how you can practice it, that is going to be very useful for you. So your um, pentatonic and blue scales in particular are something you want to spend a lot of time on. So finally I've got an example of a solo which mixes all of these ideas up. got that far it, it still isn't job done because you need to learn proper jazz licks from uh, real jazz violinists 
and um, you've got to try and force your find your way smoothly from one chord to the next so that you're not just like jumping off a cliff every time you come to a new chord. So this is the, the job of years and even decades <laughs> rather than weeks and months. Um, but it is a great adv adventure so do uh, uh, stick with it. If you would like a copy of all of these dots and the backing track then do subscribe and send me an email and do please consider as well joining me on Patreon and that will help for me to keep these videos coming and it will also give you lots of other benefits. So do check that out. I will look forward to seeing you again soon.